we're in a field here near Bankit where we're seeing quite extensive signs of poor growth in the maize probably due to water logging but I want to try and understand what the real reason is here you can see that we're in an upland position here and the soil is sandy there are some odd patches like there in the distance where the maize has grown quite well but most of the field is very poorly growing it's at about the seven leaf stage now and at that stage under normal growth it would be a lot taller there is quite a lot of weed in here particularly in patches you've got this cooch grass weed which would also aggravate the problem but if you look at these plants they are typical signs of water logging where you're getting multiple deficiency symptoms nitrogen phosphorus potassium and micro elements is streaking in the leaves and that's just because the soil is anaerobic due to the heavy rains that we had in january and the the plant just can't absorb the the nutrients especially when we had those long periods of cloudy rainy weather there's just no transpiration either so what is the the main reason here and i was wanting to determine what that is is it purely water logging and what is causing that water logging apart from the excessive rainfall because you would expect in this kind of upland position that you would get fairly good drainage check the the soil whether there is a compaction is just to have an instrument like this this is just a 50 centimeter so long steel spike with a point in the end and you can just push it into the soil like that and if you reach a particularly solid spot like I've reached here it's just not going further so that could be an indication of some compaction below it goes in easily up to that depth and then it's very hard so you know that's a, a depth of what 20 centimeters which is the kind of depth you would get to the disc layer so i'm not putting or discounting the possibility of a of a plow or disc la compacted layer in the soil <clears throat> so we dug a pit in here And what I'd like to show you is the profile that we've got here. So here's the profile of the soil. And I'll point out some features just now of this profile. So if we go from the top to the bottom again, so you've got this top layer, which is dark in color and quite deep it's uh, 30 to 35 centimeters and then you go down into this sort of redder lighter colored section which is your b horizon your subsoil and one of my considerations was there might have been a, a, a plow pan or a disc pan at some point that might have been inhibiting the water infiltration down through the profile and while that may be the case when it's very wet like this it's actually quite hard to to establish that but I'll, I'll show you just now where that might be if it is at all but my my first observation really apart from that is if you look carefully on the subsoil here I don't know how well it can it's showing you take a spot like that or like that um, these darker spots in the subsoil 
that is very typical of an anaerobic re reduced environment where you are getting water logging and the there's there's less oxidation so you're getting this reduced iron which in other words is not like rust but it's the other direction and if you look in here you get some some layers of that in here as well so this soil is not draining as we would want it to drain uh, and especially when you've had a lot of rain over a very short period of time you're going to get an anaerobic environment in these sandy soils which I'm guessing here I maybe have 11% water holding capacity maybe yeah, 11 is, is I think a reasonable figure and so that means there's 110 or so millimeters of available water per meter depth and if you take the total water content of such a soil you're probably looking at 20 percent maybe 25 percent of this soil would contain water so that would be 250 millimeters per meter depth now if you've had like 400 millimeters of rain in the month very intense this soil is going to very quickly reach its its fuel capacity and then saturation and if there are drainage issues deeper down like in you often get in these sandy soils gravel layers below the surface at, at various depths or even uh, solid or, or decomposing rock and we did actually dig up a little bit of decomposing rock in in the bottom of this pit so there's and on this upland position um, fairly flat you're not going to get much lateral drain drainage so the the prime cause of this this bad looking maze is simply water logging on an extensive stage exacerbated then by this cooch grass and other weeds this ricardia so from what i can see as you go down here there's not a, a particularly hard compacted layer that i can find in this particular spot so what i was sort of expecting is you know we were disking to maybe this depth maybe a little bit deeper when we established this crop but this field i think i don't know the exact history but i would imagine this field has been disked uh, frequently for the last number of years so i was expecting something around this depth where you might find a hard layer uh, where the roots might not be able to penetrate through uh, this field was also tobacco land in the past so it's it's probably been plowed a number of times so it could have been possible that at the plow left depth around here now you might end up with a plow layer uh, like this but again i can't particularly find a, a hard spot you know it is very wet of course so that that would ameliorate um a bit the hard it's a bit harder yeah but i don't think it's like that's the main cause of this uh water logging i think it's it's more just the profile filling up with water with that excessive long rainfall and not being able to drain out through the bottom easily on this sort of upland flat position so yeah it's not a plow layer as, as i expected um, which is a good thing in a way now what we'll do is i want to look at these these roots so we're going to dig away a little bit and just see how deep these roots have gone way right up to the edge of this maize plant and we want to look at the root system here you can just see them peeking out but what we'll do is spray this down a bit We'll see the roots in a bit better style. Okay, this is very interesting. So you you've got a, I've cut these roots off obviously when I was trimming it. But if you look at this root here and this one here, you can see they become very stubby. 
these should be just growing excessively deep these these crown roots that are coming out here but they they've been inhibited in their growth by this very wet soil condition now these ones are coming from this plant up here so they've gone a bit deeper uh, interesting these ones have actually gone up a little bit it's gone you know they always say roots grow down but they can also grow up um, away from this very wet condition there are these little tiny roots there I don't know if you can see them clearly they they're pretty dead from what I can see they they could be from previous crops these little roots down here they're dead so to me there's a live root um, you know the, the roots just haven't gone down into the soil um, there's another little root you can see the tip is is brown I don't know how clear you can see that the tip is brown in other words it's not healthy the other thing about these roots is there's no mycorrhizae on them they're clean it, 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 normally in a, in a good you know aerated soil and a healthy soil these roots would be like caked in, in dirt because of the mycorrhizae and the root hairs holding the the soil particles to the root so roots need an aerobic environment in which to thrive and as soon as you've got a, a saturated soil like this these roots are not going to grow very healthily or very deep um, and so that's another factor that's inhibiting these plants. They're just not uh, being able to exploit the nutrients and the the, the soil um, that's that's there uh, simply because of the saturation of water, um, and so you end up with a plant like this. You can see these soils are very sandy, coarse grain sand on the top here, uh, very sandy down here. So they don't have a lot of pore space, they don't have a lot of uh, aggregation. Uh, so the pores are big and they fill up with water very quickly. Unlike a clay soil which might have a better aggregation and, and much smaller pore spaces which can hold a bit more air um, than a sandy soil can. Just to show you the, the leaf numbers here, so this is the second leaf that was at the bottom here that's the third leaf so the first leaf is obviously gone so the second third fourth fifth leaf sixth leaf we count the leaves with the when the ligule is showing <clears throat> so it's uh, two three four five six leaf seven leaf eight leaf now a plant this size for having eight leaves is just showing how miserable it is i mean eight leaf should be waist high so this is really stunted because of the, the waterlogging issue that we've been talking about here. And of course you can see all the nutrient deficiency symptoms here, uh, which are a problem. So another factor that could be at play here, which my student attachment with me mentioned, and that could be an acid soil environment. Now I have no idea what the history of this field is, except that it had maize last year. and I kind of doubt that in this environment lime has been applied uh, recently um, so acidity could certainly be a factor here that that's even inhibiting these roots to grow um, if it was very acid like less than pH 4 so that could be a factor and it could be then compounded by the, the, the saturated soil conditions uh, so, you know, you have to look at a whole range of possibilities when you see a field like this. It might not just be a plow pan that is your first thought. It, it could be a whole lot of other issues that are around it. And another point that uh, Augustine mentioned is, is when you look at this weed here, this um, Ricardia, um, that is an indication of an acidifying or acid soil. So that could definitely be a factor here and uh, compound the nutrient availability nutrient uptake of this of the plants so what could be done here i think i think that this field is a write-off quite honestly um 
you know you you put top dressing on here you've already lost so much potential in this field the plants are extremely stressed nutrient wise uh, so yeah they would green up a little bit but they're not going to reach their full potential so you put a lot of money on here uh, you're going to end up with uh, a loss in here. I, I, I wouldn't expend any more money on this field if I if it was my field. Uh, what could have been done? Okay, so I think this, this crop, when I came here soon after emergence, was actually looking quite good. So that would have been, I, I can't remember the date, but it was late December when the crop was two, three leaf. It looked good. And then with that heavy rain that came, um, was there something that could have been done? There are two things could have been done, I think. The one is an inter-row rip to open up the soil and get some air in here and perhaps facilitate a bit of drainage. The second would have been an earlier top dressing. Uh, this has not, well, it has actually been top dressed believe it or not, uh, this this week, uh, or late last week, I think. Um, but if it had been top dressed when it was the five leaf stage, it might have been able to grow out and, and get a better canopy and better leaf structure than what we've got here. So apart from those two things, of course, weed control. Um, but like in this patch here, the weeds are not that serious. Uh, they are weeds, but Okay, over there, there's, uh, and just here, there's serious cooch grass. Um, again, compounding the situation. So if, if the weeds had been controlled as well, that would have helped a lot. Um, but those are kind of the only three things that could have been done here. An intero rip to open up the soil, get better drainage, get some air in there. Uh, weed control to, to minimize the competition. And then getting the top dress on earlier that would have certainly helped a lot to get these plants growing so going forward like i said i would abandon this field um you're not going to get anything out of this next year what do you need to do well i think you've got to get in a, a rip in here at the very least rip the soil to a good depth then you've got to get on top of the weeds in here the, especially this cooch grass and then get away from disking getting away from plowing and uh, start managing the soil by maintaining a residue cover on the surface improving the soil health in here getting in a rotation and you might get these fields back check for acidity check the soil ph maybe we need to put lime in here if you're gonna have to put lime you'd obviously put that on in the winter before you rip you'd need to incorporate that somehow which would mean having to come in here with some kind of soil tillage but maybe that's what you have to do um, anyway that's the situation here um, not nice to see, not nice to deal with. It represents a big loss to the farmer to feel like this. Thanks for watching. Cheers.